which is a greeting phrase used by the Indian Buddhists, especially by the ones who converted to Buddhism without, with or by the inspiration of Dr. Ambedkar in the struggle of the Dalit, the black untouchables of India. This is Sister Thage welcoming you to Freedom Now, a Saturday Pan-African and Internationalist World Affairs program with the funky music mix. Freedom Now is committed to the principle of the rights of all peoples and nations to self-determination. Yet in this era of the 1% control of the conservative, liberal, and progressive media, we provide the microphone to deconstruct their bourgeois interpretations of reality. So stay tuned for our agenda here at the liberated zone of Freedom Now. Oh, Tip, this is Dina Kamathi with this June 14th edition of Freedom Now. We'll commence with the African drumbeat historical calendar where we honor revolutionary ancestors. Then an RT piece by Michel Trzoski, the director of the Center for Research and Globalization. The recent elections in Syria, where 84% of the 11 million Syrians voted for President Bashir al Assad and the Basis Socialist Party, was a major electoral defeat for Western imperialism. Then the military defeat of the opposition jihadist movement in the Islamist state of Iraq and Syria by the Syrian army has driven ISIS into Iraq. The future strategy of the United States will be addressed. Following our central theme, a tribute to Yuri Kochiyama, the recently crossed over Japanese sister, who was a vital link to the African liberation movement. There have been numerous commentaries by the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, and Democracy Now!, among others, for Sister Yuri, but they all seem to have focused solely on her internment as a Japanese during World War II and her relationship with Malcolm X. To properly pay tribute to not only Yuri, but to those Asians who have bonded with the Black Liberation Movement, including Richard Aoki, Fred Ho, among others, we have a panel of present-day Asian activists to discuss this unpublicized phenomenon. We'll have David Dang, a youth organizer against police brutality, Mo Nashida, an elder organizer, a regular attendee at our Black Panther Party breakfasts, and Diane Fujiano, author of The Heartbeat of Struggle, The Revolutionary Life of Yuri Kochiyama, as well as books from Fred Ho and Richard Aoki, an Asian member of the Black Panther Party. Brother Matef, an organizer with the AAPRP, will co-host this segment. You know, with the decline of Western civilization economically and politically in the rise of Africa, Latin America, and Asia, it is time for African people to develop clarity on the relationship between Africans in the U.S. and Asian activists beyond a European-driven media stereotype. This is our objective, to reveal the untold story of black Asian unity in the United States. Yeah, Vince Ramos, Sweet Honey in the Rock. We'd like to welcome our panelists this afternoon, uh, Brother Matif Harmas, who will be a co-producer with myself on this presentation, Brother Mo Nishida, longtime activist, a hummingbird warrior of the Dog Soldier Society from the Japanese tribe, uh, Brother David Dang, uh, anti-police, uh, cop watch activist, working very closely with a lot of African youth, uh, Sister... Uh, uh, let me see, Sister Diane Fujano, Fujino. Uh, Fujino, excuse me, Diane Fujino, who's the author of a number of books and articles, in particular, uh, Heartbeat of Struggle, The Revolutionary Life of Yuri Kochiyama, as well as books in Fred Ho and articles on Richard Aoki. And most importantly, we're doing a tribute this afternoon to Sister Yuri Kochiyama. As I stated in the intro, there have been numerous commentaries by the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Democracy Now!, among others, for Sister Yuri, but they all seem to focus on her internment as a Japanese so-called prisoner of war or Japanese resident of America who was considered a prisoner of war because of the United States World War II, as well as her relationship with Malcolm X. And we'd like to kind of go a little deeper in terms of understanding Sister Yuri from an Asian perspective and the relationship to the black liberation struggle. So I'd like to welcome our guests to uh, Southern California Freedom Now. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so I, I think, first of all, Brother Matef, you kind of co-host this with myself. We'd like to get a background, Sister Yuri, from uh, Sister Diane uh, Fujino, and uh, so we understand who she is. Sister Diane. Yeah, thanks, Brother Didon, for doing this important show. 
Um, Yuri Kochiyama was born in 1921 in San Pedro and was always very active in community service. Um, you know, when World War, the U.S. entered World War II and incarcerated Japanese Americans, her family was part of that. She was in the Santa Anita racetracks, which were converted to temporary housing, and then in the Jerome, Arkansas con- um, concentration camp. After the war, she moved to New York to marry her husband, Bill Kochiyama, and they had six children. And throughout the 40s and 50s, they were involved in, again, a lot of community service work, especially supporting Japanese and Chinese soldiers en route to the Korean War. And their home was also known, even then, as Grand Central Station, because every Friday and Saturday night, they opened up their home to maybe a hundred people, you know, every weekend night in this housing project unit. Half the people were strangers. And in the 50s, she began to follow the events of the civil rights movement. And um, in 1960, her family moved to, to Harlem. And that's when she became explicitly politically active. She began to work um, for better quality schools for Harlem kids, including her own. Um, she was daring enough to support uh, Bill Ipton, a so- an explicitly socialist candidate who lived in her housing project. And even though at that time she herself wasn't socialist, she saw the good work he was doing, and so she supported him. And, you know, at that time, people would have been afraid to support an open socialist. And then in 1963, she met Malcolm X. And initially, she told him that she opposed his views on integration, um, but always had an open-mindedness. So as Malcolm invited her to his... uh, Organization of Afro-American Unity Liberation Schools. She began attending every week and very quickly transformed her political ideology and came to revolutionary nationalism, internationalism, began working with the most militant black activists in Harlem. Um, After Malcolm's assassination, uh, started working with the groups that emerged to carry on Malcolm's vision, including the Republic of New Africa, she worked in the Asian American movement, the Puerto Rican movement. I mean, she's really a bridge builder. And but the movement that has been dearest to her heart is the political prisoner movement. And so she's been working for some six decades and uh, very consistently as an activist, really nonstop, and um, has influenced generations and generations of activists from the 60s to the present. We just heard from Diane. She's a professor of Asian American Studies and director of the Center for Black Studies at UC Santa Barbara. I guess the million-dollar question is a common denominator with our guests today. They all have a relationship with the black liberation movement. And I guess the question becomes, how has Yuri inspired you, Diane, you, David, you, Brother Mo, in terms of you reaching out to our liberation movement, to the black to the, uh, African liberation movement? Sister Diane first. Um. You know, she's been instrumental. I mean, at the time that I I did my first interview with her in 95, I was doing research on Asian American women's activism, but part of my my impetus was that I knew so little about Asian American activism, in part because, you know, there wasn't that much known. I mean, people like Brother Mo, who made this kind of history, understood some of it. But, you know, that knowledge came through the movement. And so I sought out people like Sister Yuri, to, in part to learn about my own Japanese-American radical history and um, came to know it. And she's completely changed my life and influenced my politics very much, not alone, but, but she's been, I would say, my most foremost political mentor. And so her Afro-Asian solidarities, her radical politics, her uh, ways of being a border crosser and always connecting movements and always thinking about how an issue affects everybody, not just one's own group, has been instrumental to me. And David, you're about 28 and late 20s. Yep. How has you affected your worldview, your relationship to the African community, to the black community? Well, um, how Yuri affected me um, was, well, she she was an inspiration. Her and uh, Richard Elke were both um figures that inspired me and as far as my involvement with the black community uh, as far as uh, liberation and activism Um, I mean I grew up in a pretty racially diverse working class neighborhood and moving out to LA or living in Inglewood now um, the politics is is a little different um, 
people question how I'm involved with the black community the way I am. And, uh, you know, someone like Yuri is inspiring. Um, I only heard about her through my beginning of ed educating myself um, w with Malcolm X. He was a gateway to Yuri as he's been a gateway to a lot of people to uh, uh, revolutionary politics there. You know, just a little side question. You talk in, your, in our earlier discussions about how police brutality in Minneapolis affected yeah. young Asians. Can you elaborate upon that? Because there is a commonality here in terms of police brutality, not just for the African community, but also for the Asian community. Yeah, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Can you address the question of police brutality on Asian youth in Minneapolis in areas you lived? Yeah, I mean, growing up, um, I think a lot of it is just, you know, I'm, I'm a child of uh, Vietnamese refugees. Um, th that's the trend with... Um, Asians are from Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, um, and uh, a lot of them come here, and um, there's this culture diaspora. Um, a lot of us get involved with uh, street culture, um, you know, gang violence or drug dealing. Um, I was not involved in any of the gang violence, but I always was around it uh, in Brooklyn Park, you know, just seeing... Asian youth beating on each other, um, hurting one another, wh whether it be just violence or drugs there. And, uh, you know, along with that, it comes with um, pr police surveillance, you know, 